Okay, so ESPN did a top 100 NBA players before this previous season, and why not just take a look at some things? So they had LeBron number one, which was fair to have after, you know, won the championship, played amazing, especially in game five, and uh, is it any different now? I mean, it could be. Number two, AD. So I think... You know, the way it can go from season to season is pretty wild because, uh, you know, we saw AD dominate against the small Rockets and be great against the Nuggets and all that. Uh, but after this previous season with, uh, you know, the injury stuff and not being in the best shape to open up the year, I think it's tough to put AD this high now. And I don't think anybody would. Now, you think about Kevin Durant at number six, and, and this was with the Achilles. I mean, there were real questions of, is he going to come back from the Achilles and be himself? And the answer is, yeah. So to me, it's a consensus top four of LeBron, Giannis, KD, and Steph in some order. Now, you might notice there's no Steph in the top seven. It's because he was number eight. I'm trying to think of what would the reasoning have been. I think it, it would have just been that we hadn't seen Steph for like a whole year because of injuries. I don't want to obsess over individual spots too much, but, you know, Harden would be over Dame. Is Harden over Kawhi? And eh, my gut would be, like, no, because Kawhi's playoff performances are actually, like, kind of insane. I mean, remember that game he, against Dallas when they had to win and he put up, like, 40 on a million contested shots at the top of the key? I would have Harden above AD, Luka, Dame. Would I have Harden above Jokic? Yeah, probably. Above Embiid, yeah, probably as well. I mean, if you force me to pick between Jokic and Luka, I'll go with Jokic. Just, I mean, I do think Jokic's uh, previous season has gone a little underrated because I think people are so caught up in, well, there were injuries and they question whether he should have won MVP or not. Listen, man, the dude was insane. Yeah, so I would put him over Luka. We're talking Kawhi, Harden. It starts to get tough. And then the next interesting one, as I mentioned, was Embiid at 14. Now, I remember the story with Embiid before this previous season was he's one of the best players in the league when he's going 100%. And that was not always the case. I mean, yeah, he was the MVP frontrunner for a good chunk of this previous season until he got hurt. But, you know, two seasons ago, what he averaged, like 23 points? And it was like he needed Chuck and Shaq to wake him up sometimes during the year. Uh, now, of course, you are putting Embiid somewhere up with these guys. We'll notice Ben Simmons at 16. Where does Simmons drop now in the consensus? Does he drop to, like, the 30s now or something? I don't know. As far as Bam 13, I do think that was an ambitious pick. Because, you know, the defense, the passing, and the potential as a shooter and being more of a scorer for Bam is there. But maybe a little too, too much this uh, early on. But at the same time, somebody always makes that kind of jump, and usually you don't see it coming, you know? I mean, now again, I don't want to obsess over every specific one, but Beal behind Jamal Murray, that's just not, that's just not true. <laughs> Granted, Jamal Murray has these moments in the playoffs where it's like, holy crap, what's happening right now? The guy looks like Dame. But uh, we would agree Beal is above Jamal Murray, right? The Zion thing remains very interesting as well, because... The advanced stats would tell you that Zion is already, like, pushing for number 10 in the league because he's just so efficient. Like, the guy averages, what, 27 points or whatever it is on 60% shooting? Like, it's crazy. But, of course, we know the defense has to get better. And I do think eventually when you get to this point, you do have to have a bit of that, like, I'm going to drag this team to as far as they possibly can go. And I don't think Zion is, has done that so far. Now, the next one would be Kyrie at 25. Uh, to me, I'm putting Kyrie above, like, everybody on this list right here. Fear with Kyrie is health, right? Like, if you're going to include health in all of this, then this is fair. But you could argue he's right there with, like, Tatum. Who, I don't even know if Tatum is, like, definitely the 11th best player in the league. I feel like that is a little high in and of itself. So Trey Young at 29, after his playoff run, he's definitely going to be higher. Put Trey above Ingram, above CJ, above Gobert, above Siakam. So that's at least a few spots for you. And then again, we're knocking Ben Simmons down a bit. So now they also had CJ at 27 and like what? I mean, I like CJ, but I think that's way too high. 
Now, this one is, uh, this one's a little wild. Marcus Smart at 37 above SGA, that's just not right. I mean, you can take the absolute best version of Marcus Smart, which was all defense first team, and it's just, like, I know what they're trying to do, you know, doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but that's just too much. Uh, they had Lonzo at 54 above Christian Wood and Zach Levine. I mean, all these guys are better than Lonzo. Dragic, well, Dragic, he might be over the hill. It might have just been a bad injury season for him. But, I mean, these guys are all better than Lonzo. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same thing with Marcus, you know. It's the defense, it's the passing, it's the the team is always better when he's in the game as opposed to on the bench. But that type of stuff only goes so far. Like, Zach Levine averaged, what, 30 points this year on 60 true shooting or whatever it technically was. Uh, in fact, Levine at 56 in general. I mean, he's got to be much higher. I don't know exactly where the cutoff would be, but, you know, like, I think Levine's better than Brogdon and Van Vliet and Vooch and Przingis. He's not better than SG. Well, maybe it's arguable between them. This one was another infamous one. DeMar at 82. Yeah, I think they were going too hard in the, like, advanced analytics don't like DeRozan thing, which, by the way, they don't even dislike him that much. Even if defensively he's never been the best. But, look, he, he improved a lot as a playmaker. And I think he's gotten better at picking his spots from mid-range. Like, even on his best days from mid-range, it's still always more efficient to just attack the basket and draw fouls. John Collins at 84. That one's also a little bit of a hot take, especially because he just came off of averaging, what, 20 and 10 for him? Yeah, there's questions about his defense and his passing. And now he's a little lower in the pecking order of the Hawks' offense. Or more so, other guys are more up to his level around Trey doing everything. But, I mean, he's better than, like, Josh Richardson. He's better than John Wall at this point in John Wall's career. He's better than Gordon, KCP, Montrez. And as we get to the bottom, it was Joe Harris, Otto Porter, Derek White. Uh, there was no Julius Randle, who, of course, was just an all-NBA guy. There were questions about Randle before this season that just happened. The other one was R.J. Barrett. They did not project R.J. Barrett to have much of an improvement, clearly. Uh, there was also no Colin Sexton or Darius Garland. Uh, Reddit also talked about the list, granted nine months ago, but no Valanchunas. This was two seasons ago, and as for this previous season, yeah, he proved he should have been on the list. 